All right, so in the last part of this series, I showed you how to basically sh kind of render out a bunch of columns and showing all of these products. I want to take this a step further and probably add some type of like filtering or queries so that we can actually search for a particular product by category or something. I'm going to time box this for like 30 minutes. So let's see what we can build out in 30 minutes. And before I dive into that, I wanted to kind of show you another VS Code plugin I found to help you connect with your MongoDB server, whether it's running locally or on a remote like third-party service like Mongo Atlas. So I went to extensions and I typed in MongoDB. There's this cool extension that you can install, which once you install it, you can actually go here and add a connection to your MongoDB um, instance. And then I can go here and say, do some advanced settings connection, and I can fill out this form. I'm just gonna keep the default and click connect, and this should work. And now on the left here, we can actually see that we have that shopping cart, and we can kind of dive into the products and see the different um, entities that we've created. So this should be useful. Um, instead of going over here in the terminal and like doing stuff via the terminal and typing in commands, which could be kind of overwhelming and hard to remember, now I can actually just dive into these documents and actually like look at them. So that's pretty cool. I don't know if there's like more power that you can do. Looks like they have like a, a search option. So you can actually do your searches here. Um, I'm not sure how it works. It looks like there's a play button. So I could probably type in a query and click this. But, but we won't dive too much into that. If you want to learn more about it, maybe just go and read the docs. So let's try to first maybe add a search bar and we can actually search for a product by name. That seems like the most basic use case. So let's just go ahead and do that. So on the products page, remember this is like the main page where we're displaying all of those product cards. We could probably add some type of input box here above this, like with the columns. In fact, since we're using React Bootstrap, it would make more sense to maybe just add another row right directly above this. And then we could add some columns here. So inside of this, we actually want to add like a search bar. So if you go back, you'll see that we have search here. And let me go to the React Bootstrap docs because we're going to be needing that probably. So let's go ahead and go to components. Let's go to form. And we are going to just look at how to do like a search box again, which, you know, we have already done. Let's just do this form control large. This looks like it might be nice. So instead of just typing search here, I'm going to say form control put that in there and say search for a product by name. All right, so typically with forms or input boxes, uh, you have like a placeholder text. So this is what's gonna actually be displayed in the search box before a user has actually typed into it. Um, make sure you auto import. So let me go back and auto import form. Okay, that should be good. All right, so we have a really huge search box here that says search for a product by name. And we should probably add some margin or padding to the bottom of this because it looks really crowded right now. Um, there are some helpful utility functions where I think you can add like some type of padding or margin. I think it's just like MB2. I don't, yeah, I don't know. Uh, I think if you just actually just go to the bootstrap docs instead of React Bootstrap, you can actually add like a class of this. So let's. Let's do that. We want to add a class name to this form input box and say margin bottom of four. This is how you can do it. And if you use anything like Tailwind CSS, like there's a couple of helpful utility classes that you can attach to elements to move them or add some spacing, etc. But it's not as verbose as something like Tailwind. So you see there's a little bit of margin between the cards and the input box. So I want to do the same thing. I'm going to say margin top of four. And that should add a little bit of spacing here. And just remember, I'm zoomed in 200% because some people watch videos on their phones. But if we zoom out a little bit, this is actually what it looks like. So it looks okay. I mean, I'm not a graphic designer or anything, but I'm sure someone else could design it much better. Uh, another thing I'm going to do is using that margin bottom, let's just add some margin bottom to these rows You'll see, or to these column cards. You'll notice that there's like no spacing between the cards. So if we go and find where we define that, and if you remember, we created a component up here called product card. You could probably just add it to this div here. Um, in fact, I don't know why we have a div. I think we could probably just put it directly on the card itself. And then on the class name, I could say margin bottom of 
two and see if this does what we want. All right, let's do four. Two wasn't enough, so go back to four. So let's just zoom out again and kind of look at that. That looks a little bit better. So again, what are we trying to do other than get distracted with adding um, some margin? We want to be able to type into this and have that kind of filter down what is displayed. Now we're going to do this a hacky way by just doing this all on the UI. But later on in the series, you probably want to do a like a query to the back end so that the back end doesn't return all this data. But right now we don't have that many products and I do recommend that you do the easiest thing first when you're learning. So let's just try to do that. Let's go to the input box that we created. So right here. And we want to say when someone changes this. So I'll say on change, we want to type in a, we want to call a function, right? So I'm going to say, let's name this like on filter changed. No, on search change. And we're just going to call it like that. And then we need to make sure that we have a function defined up here. So I'm going to say this is going to be a function that takes in an E. And what we can do is basically set that filter to some type of state variable, right? So very similar to how we did it with the form that we did on like part two of this series where we had a form that can create products. Or is that part one? I don't remember at this point. But you probably want to make another state variable here. So I'm going to say const um, search and set search is equal to use state. And we're going to set that equal to an empty string for right now. But when someone types into the search box here, we want to basically set that state variable so that we can use it later on. So going back to the function, remember we made this function on search change. We just want to basically set that state variable. So I'm going to say e.currentTarget dot value. And now when they type that should update that search state. And then also what we want to do is make sure we bind that value of the search input to that search state. All right, so if everything is good, we should be able to type into this. And again, using our Chrome inspector, it's really good to go into this components tab here and click on the component. Uh, I'm going to do the top level component, which would be uh, which one of these products page this is where the state is defined in a hook so as we type in like hello world we want to verify that hello world is put into our second uh, state variable here so this is working good we're binding to it all right so now what we want to kind of do is we need to basically uh, when the search is typed in here we want to filter out these keywords or we want to filter out these products using that keyword that they typed in so Again, this isn't like a this isn't like a production ready search feature. This is like I'm trying to show you how to basically implement something small and then later on we're going to add like better functionality. So when they type in, we're setting that value and we need to use that value to filter what gets displayed in the dashboard, right? Well, luckily we have a function already called get products and column which is being used to basically filter out um, you know, which products need to be in which column. So if we actually made another like kind of computed function here where we can just basically pass in the products and get a filter down list. So I'm going to say const get filtered products takes in a products argument and that's going to be the array of products that's going to be passed in. And we want to make sure that we return a filtered list. So I'm going to say products, oops, let's, let's name this products dot filter and then we want to basically if you don't know how filter works in javascript you basically pass it a callback function the first argument of that function is going to be the individual product that exists in the products array and then you need to return true or false if you want that product to come back in the final array here so i'm going to say product dot name dot i think it's includes it might be contains i don't remember at this point i'm going to say search all right, so basically find every product that has your search term in its name. It hopefully makes sense. And what we're going to be doing here is we need to use that function where we're passing it in here. So instead of saying get products in column, I'm going to also call it like this. So it's a little bit, this could probably be cleaned up somehow, but we first filter down the products and then we split them into different columns. Might This might be a little bit... um. Yeah, confusing, but hopefully it makes sense. So if we go back to the UI, notice that nothing shows up 
because we have typed in hello world and we don't have a product name hello world but if i type in something like uh lk then milk should come back uh, lk we get almond milk and we get milk and what else can we try doing do eggs a rice you can do flour nothing towels okay so that filter is actually working all it's doing is taking that huge list of products and kind of pruning it down to only show you what you're searching for so that was a pretty straightforward feature in my opinion um we can kind of take this a step further let's say that we wanted to um show the shopping cart now uh, we haven't really worked on that yet but let's say there is a way to show what is in your shopping cart uh let's change this to a button so let's go to the header which doing fuzzy search so command p type in header that'll take you right to the file we want to basically convert this to a link or a button or whatever and off the top of my head i don't remember how to do this i think you have to on react router you can import something called a link and i think you wrap the text that you want to display in that link like this I think you just do it normally um so this would be i don't know if it's href or route let me just try this and see what happens link is not defined i need to import it from react router dom you should not use link outside a router okay so got a little issue now the issue is is that you can't use this outside of router and if you go to your app.js, you'll see that the header is actually on the outside of your router. So I don't know if it makes sense to put that inside the router. It might not work. Hopefully it does. Let's see. Okay, that worked pretty good. Um, but I think, let's just go to the docs, React Router, because I don't think I'm using this correctly. So let me go to React Router. Let me try to find link, wherever y'all do this and it's actually two so you do two instead of href so let's change that to two so again i'm going back to the header here i'm finding that link we just added and i was doing the wrong attribute here so i'm gonna do two slash cart and now if you click it that should take you to slash cart which it did but it doesn't show anything any anything different it doesn't show changes because we haven't added a slash cart page so Let's probably work on that next. By the way, it's complaining because there's some things that we're not actually using. So I'm going to delete those so we get a green successful build. All right, so let's add a new page called like shopping or cart. I'll just say shopping cart page. Pretty straightforward. And on the shopping cart page, let's just say like my cart. So we'll display my cart and we need to make sure that we use this on the router so if we go back to app.js where that router is found we just need to add a new new path basically i'm going to say cart and that component is going to be shopping cart page and i need to import that so make sure you import it um dot slash pages slash this All right, so this is a, I'm doing a kind of a different export. I'm actually going to go back and rename these two named exports because I don't like default exports for whatever reason. So I'm going to say export const products page and get rid of that default. By the way, I'm just doing a little bit of refactoring here, so don't be too thrown off. So this is a function which we no longer need to export default. And then going back to the app, I'm just going to make sure I wrap these in curly braces. Cool. So now we can actually go to our cart and it doesn't display anything because we haven't actually added that logic. One thing you'll notice too is like there's no way to get back to the product. So I think we should change this to be a link that takes you to the home page. So again, let's close out of this stuff. Do a fuzzy search, type in header. That'll take us to the component that we're kind of uh, need, need to uh, look at. And I think what we could do here is probably just do a slash. There's probably a better way. I, I should probably make this a link as well. Typically, whenever you have links on React Router, you need to like 
make sure that they're wrapped in link tags. So let's get rid of the, get rid of the href here, and I think I could just put this to the home page. All right, it looks kind of messed up in terms of styling because I don't know, but it works. So now we can go back and forth between the cart and our page. So I think what would be cool to to do now is like as you add things to your cart, you need to be able to actually go and see what you added to your cart. So let's click on this cart two link here, and you'll see that there's nothing displayed. But we could probably also show using cards or something everything that's been placed into your cart. So let's kind of maybe share a component. Let's go to the main shopping cart page. Or sorry, the products page. And remember, we made a component up here called product card. We could kind of extract this to a component here. So that both pages could use the same card and kind of share some code. Sometimes this works out good. Sometimes it's not good to share like code because what if on the product card you actually want to show something like how much it costs, the total tax, or like when it could be shipped by. All that information might not need to be displayed on the main page. So you know what? I'm going to change my mind. I'm not even going to make this a shared component. I'm just going to copy the layout that we're doing for this. Paste it right in here, okay? Sometimes it's good to just copy and duplicate code if you know that the stuff that's inside it is going to tr change drastically. Um, <clears throat> so I'm just gonna say shopping cart card here. And I'm going to basically, what are we gonna do here? All right, so yeah. This, we need to get the actual cart. So if you remember, we have its, this context of the shopping cart, which we were accessing on the products page. I think it was like here. We said use context to get the cart and the set cart. But we need access to this cart variable, right? How else are we going to show the shopping cart unless we have access to that shared date? So I'm going to go ahead and copy this and put it inside the shopping cart pages component here. And make sure you import use context. And what we need to do is basically loop over our cart. And for every product that's in the cart, we are going to render out this shopping cart card. So let's just go ahead and do cart.map. And then we're going to say product. And that is going to render out a shopping cart card here. And remember, this requires you to pass in a product, I believe. And it's also currently coded, so you need to pass in an add product to card, but we're going to get rid of that because we don't need to do that right now. We could probably have like a remove from cart, or just remove. All right, so we kind of wrote a lot of code. Let's make sure it's still working in the UI. Card is not defined. So again, you know, you could probably auto-import this. Auto-import the button from React Bootstrap. Uh, I'll just say button here. Still complaining about something. What is it complaining about? Shopping cart context is not defined, right? I need to auto import this as well from the main app file, which you'll see is imported here. And let's just go ahead and look at the UI. So let's add some things to the cart. Added two items and go back to the cart. And you'll notice that they are displaying, but they are huge. So we probably also need to do that whole like column logic, maybe. I don't know, this can all be refactored. Like maybe we don't want to do cards here. Maybe we just want to do like a, a list of your items, kind of like you do on Amazon. Maybe that would make more sense. So maybe instead we should do a table, right? Let's try to learn some new components instead of just copying a bunch of existing design. Like we could do a table to show the items that you have. Maybe we could do something else. Maybe just do some like divs or something. I don't really know. But uh, yeah, you know, let's just not do the card here. I'm going to say shopping cart item instead of card. And we are going to basically loop over every product, display that shopping cart item. And we're going to put that in a container. So let's just go ahead and refactor this to be a container. That's going to be in a row. And then that needs to be in a column. So this is like how you typically do it with Bootstrap with your layouts. You need like the grid system. 
All right. So that will basically put them all in one column. And what we could probably do as well is we could change this from card to something else. Like we don't need an image. Let me try doing this. I'm going to make this a, a row. This, this uh, item is going to be a row with three columns. So the first column is going to have an image. Comment this out and see if this actually shows anything. All right, so I need to make sure I import row and column and container. All right, so this is our cart. It looks pretty bad. We have two images. But really what we want to do is we want to make three columns here. And we could have this display the name and the title or description here in the the middle column and then maybe have like some actions in the right column I don't know just trying to make it a little bit different so you're learning some new things I don't want to just copy code and display the exact same thing all right so this is our our cart it looks pretty bad but we could probably add some margin between these rows so let's go back to the row and say class name margin bottom of four that adds a little bit of spacing we might as well just add some spacing to the header as well. Like everything below the header should just be pushed down. So in the header component, I'm just going to say margin bottom of four with a class name. And that'll push it down to give us some space. And then typically like your pages should have some context of like what you're looking at. Because right now you just see some random things. But what we want to do is we should probably go back here. And I'm actually going to take this out and put that down here because these are all kind of wrapped in rows and columns to begin with. But inside of this, we could make an H1 and call it like shopping cart. Okay. And then probably give that again some margin bottom or a little bit better. So yeah, this is a different view of your shopping cart. I think I'm going to implement one more feature um, before I wrap this tutorial up. We're already almost at like 25 minutes or so. So when you click on this remove button, we want to remove the item from your shopping cart. So how do we do that? Well, let's go to our shopping cart page component. And remember, there is a remove button in here. And what we want to do is basically when someone clicks on that button, we can say remove product. This is a function that we haven't created yet, so stick with me. And we're going to pass that a product argument. Okay, so that's just going to be basically ooh, the, the product that they clicked on is going to be told to be removed. And I want to make sure that this function is also passed in here. So remove product. And then make sure that whenever we're calling that component down here, we're just passing in that function. Again, we haven't created this function yet, so just use your imagination. We're going to create it in just a second. All right, we're going to create it right now. So this is going to be a function that takes in a product. And then we need to basically strip that out of the cart. So you can use a filter is probably the easiest approach. So we want to say like set cart. And then we want to find or filter out all the items that aren't this product. So I'm going to say cart dot filter. And then I'm going to say product in cart. And then we want to find all the items that don't match that. So don't match product. And this might not work because it's by reference. So you might need to do like dot um, ad or something. Well, let's just see what happens if you do this. Because if you click it now, it might remove both. But let's see. Click it and it removed that one. So this seems like it's working. And notice that the cart removes the, the length or decremented the length. And I can remove this one. And my cart is now empty. So going back, let's just add some some various things go back to our cart and just you know remove some paper towels remove some eggs so that's the issue you saw i clicked eggs and it removed both of them there's a little bug with this logic here because i believe it's kind of when we click on the add to cart let me go back to the products page we're adding the same reference to the cart right so this is a big issue you actually want to make sure that you do the spread operator and create a brand new object reference so that that issue doesn't happen. So now if I go back and add 
the same eggs three times and I delete one of them, it doesn't try to like remove every single one. It just removes the one that I clicked. And again, you probably want to actually do some more refactoring and make this have quantity instead of like having eggs added three times to your cart. But, you know, we're keeping it basic for right now. I think it'd be nice to also add the length here, like how many items you have next to the title. So let's try to figure out how we do that. If you go back to your shopping cart page, you need to find your title. And then here, how would we do that? Well, we just need to basically print out the length of the cart. So I'm going to say like, um, let's say cart.length, and then I'm going to say items in cart. One items in cart, okay? So if we go back and add a bunch and go back to our cart, you'll notice that it says five items in cart, and those are all here. So I think the last thing that would be cool to do, I don't know if we have time to do it, but if there's a way to like, when you click on this add to cart, it actually shows a bootstrap, um, I don't know, like alert or something or toasts. I think a toast would be cool. So a toast is like, you do something and then it like shows you, maybe I don't want a toast, maybe I want something else. Yeah, I think a toast would work okay. Top start, top center. Just something to give the user feedback that, hey, like something was added to the cart. So let's just try to go here and find out where they do this. Looks like they do it here. So if I copy this toast container, I think I can put that to the top of my products page. And I'm going to put it just inside the container somewhere, I guess. I don't know if it really matters where it's at. It might need to be in a row or something. Or I could just put it inside of... Um, just put this whole thing inside of a fragment. But this component can actually not be in the container. But let's make sure we auto-import that. So I'm going to auto-import the container. The toast container. And auto-import the toast. What else is in here? Position is not defined, so this needs to be the actual string. So if you notice here, we have like a top center. I'm going to go ahead and paste that top center in so that it should hopefully display to the center top of my page. And I don't know how you actually get it to show. Let's see, if we go back to our app, what does it do? All right, so right now it's just always being displayed. But we just want to dynamically show it. Which I don't know... Maybe we should just do like a set timeout or something. This one looks like it automatically closes. Unclose, set, show. Okay, yeah, so if you follow this example here, we basically need to have some state to keep track of the toast. So I'm going to say like show toast and set show toast and then default the false. And then using that state variable, you can actually attach it to your toaster or whatever it's called. So I'm going to go here and we'll make sure that we have all this thing, all of this stuff pasted in here. So that when this thing tries to hide itself after three seconds, two seconds, it should hide for us. Let's see what's complaining about. Set show is not a function. Set show toast. Set show toast. All right, here we go. So now when I click it, it should hopefully show that toast. It did not. It crashed. Oh, okay. I know why. Um, when I actually add something to the cart, so remember we have a function called like add product to cart. We want to make sure that we say set show toast true. Okay. So that'll show the toast. And then after two seconds, that should disappear. So click it. It showed up here. Now there is an issue because it shows up like way at the top of the screen and you don't know where it is. So I wonder if you can say like absolute positioning. Um, let's see, do they have anything that you can do? Close, let's see. Yeah, I don't know if there's a way to like make it be absolute on your page. I could probably hack at it and get some like CSS going. So react bootstrap toast absolute. Position. I want it to be absolutely positioned on the page. Okay, that didn't show anything. How to show Bootstrap Toast and React? Absolute.
Let's just try adding this. If not, I'm not going to waste too much time on this because, uh, I don't know. It's not that important. So you click it and it's still, oh, it needs to be maybe fixed. Position fixed, maybe? Let's see what happens if you do this. Okay. It's being hidden by some images, so I probably need to give it like a Z index. Let's see if Bootstrap has a Z index thing you can use. Um, Z index fixed. Full tip pop over modal off canvas. I guess you want to use Z index fixed, maybe. I've never actually used this before, so let's try adding a Z index fix and see if that fixes the issue. Oh. Maybe it's just Z fixed. Oh. Alright, so when in doubt, just hack it on. So I'm gonna say style and then I'm gonna say Z index is thousand. Um what is it complaining about though? Oh yeah, this needs to be an object. Okay, here we go. Must have one parent element. What am I doing wrong here? Um, toaster, I feel like did something wrong. This linter issue happened when I added the style in. Okay, I don't know. My linter's just going crazy, but let's see if that fixes it. Still doesn't fix it. Why is it? Why are these images blocking it? Toast header, toast body, position absolute. Uh, maybe I need to like add it to something else. Let's just try adding these things to the toast instead of the toast container. Oh, that made it worse. Let's see if there's like a Z index set on this stuff. Like, I'm not sure why this is not working. Okay, let me let me delay this to like a much longer time so it doesn't just disappear every time I click it. And the issue here is that if I were to give this thing a Z index, so this is the the actual toast. If I give this a real Z index here of 2000, still hidden. Those containers, the index of 2000. Okay, yeah, so giving the container a Z index fixes it, but for some reason, it's not being applied to the style here. Maybe it's because, like, hmm. Let me refresh this real quick. All right, I just really want to figure this out. So, this one, the container should have a Z index on it which it doesn't, but I told it that it should have a style of Z index. Okay, let's just go to this. Maybe there's a better way to do this. Z index two, maybe? Okay, <laughs> the issue was I was passing a integer as Z index, but that does not do what you want it to do. So you have to pass it a string. So if I say Z index of one, the toast stays on top. So that was really um, a pain in the butt, but I think it's working now. So now when you actually add stuff to your cart, it's supposed to hide it. Let's see. One Mississippi, two Mississippi. There we go. That's it. So I think we did some cool functionality here. We wasted a lot of time trying to figure out the Z index of this, but hey, we, we made it through. And we added some cool functionality for filtering, adding stuff to a cart, viewing those items on the cart, and deleting them, and then also displaying the cart count here. So if you learned something from this video, be sure to give me a thumbs up. Also, leave me a comment below if there's something that I did and you think you have a better approach to doing it. I'm always open to feedback. 
Um, again, I just do the first thing that comes to my head, so I don't really spend a lot of time thinking about what I'm doing, especially in this tutorial video, because I want to just show you my stream of consciousness so you can kind of learn about my thought process. So there's probably things I'm doing wrong. And then also, if you're new to this channel, be sure to subscribe because I'm going to have other videos like this in the future that should help you become a better React or backend Burn Stack developer. All right, stay tuned for the next part of the series.